While war history mostly focuses on men and their achievements, there are also women who have become legendary because of their incredible courage and determination in battle. In continuation of our Women's Month series, we'll be talking about the baddest female warriors in Southeast Asia history. My name is Angeline and this is The Daily Watch. In the male-dominated world of combat and warfare, there have been several women who have left their mark in Southeast Asian history despite the laws and common ancient beliefs that women should not interfere with power and politics. They were mothers, sisters, daughters, and wives. Though outnumbered by their bands of brothers in battle, these fearsome female fighters have each made an indelible mark in history. From queens to war leaders, elite palace guards, rebels and revolutionaries, here's a list of historical women in combat in Southeast Asia from the 1st century to the 20th century. 1st century to the 9th century. The Chung sisters, in Vietnamese, Hai Ba Chung, Chung Chak and Chung Nhi. The Chung sisters, known as the two ladies Chung, or in Vietnamese as Hai Ba Chung, and individually as Chung Chak and Chung Nhi, were Vietnamese military leaders and heroines who ruled for three years after rebelling in 40 CE against the first Chinese occupation of Vietnam. Their father was the village prefect and head of a military family, which meant the sisters grew up well-versed in the martial arts. They spent much time studying the art of warfare, weaponry, and fighting skills. Legend has it that they entered the battles completely naked to embarrass the enemy soldiers. The armies of the Chung sisters successfully crushed the Chinese legions after 247 years of domination. After the victory, the people proclaimed Chung Chak, the older of the two sisters, to be their ruler. She was the first woman to be a Vietnamese monarch as well as the only queen regnant in the history of Vietnam. Sadly, the sisters' rule lasted for only three years. They were defeated under Chinese Emperor Ma Yuan in 43 CE and the country once again fell into Chinese hands. To protect their honor and to elude ridicule, it was said that they committed suicide by drowning themselves in the hot river. Despite this, the rebellion against the Chinese led by the two sisters changed the fate of Vietnam forever. Many Vietnamese say that if the sisters had not fought against the Chinese, there would be no Vietnamese nation today. They are regarded as national heroines of Vietnam. Phong Thi Chin Phong Thi Chin was a Vietnamese noblewoman who fought alongside the Chin sisters in order to repel Han invaders from Vietnam in 43 CE. She was pregnant at the time and was in charge of protecting the central flank. Legend says she gave birth on the front lines and carried her newborn in one arm and a sword in the other as she fought to open the ranks of the enemy. Le Chan Le Chan was another woman general who supported the Chun sisters. People from Haiphong consider her as the tutelary spirit who founded An Bien village, which is Haiphong city now. When the Chun sisters rebelled, Le Chan and her volunteer soldiers joined the insurrection. Within months, they had helped to take back the 65 citadels from the Chinese and had liberated the region. When one of the Chung sisters became queen, Le Chan was given the responsibility of defending Haitan region. Chu Ti Chin, or Lady Chu. Lady Chu was a fearsome female Vietnamese warrior who fought for freedom from the patriarchy and her Chinese oppressors. Though described as the Vietnamese Joan of Arc, she predated the French heroine by more than 1,200 years. At 20 years old, she raised a following of 1,000 strong and urged her fellow Vietnamese to rebel against the Chinese forces that fought to conquer their homeland in the 3rd century. Chu cut a grand figure on the battlefield, carrying two swords and wearing bright yellow robes while she rode the war elephant. After liberating her territory and beating the Chinese back in 30 advances, she lost the war and is believed to have committed suicide by 23. Despite this dark end, her legacy lives on. Stories of her suggest that she had a voice that sounded loud as a temple bell and that she was 9 feet tall with breasts that were 3 feet long. These tall tales speak to the incredible presence this young woman who inspired people past and present possessed. Her power to inspire is easy to imagine, considering her gift for words. She was quoted saying, I'd like to ride storms, kill sharks in the open sea, drive out the aggressors, reconquer the country, undo the ties of serfdom, and never bend my back to be the concubine of whatever man. 13th to 15th century, Tribhuwana 
Wijaya Tungadewi. Tribhuwana Wijaya Tungadewi, known in her regnal name Tribhuwana Tungadewi Jayawish Nuwaldani, which means the exalted goddess of three worlds, which the glory of Vishnu radiates, was a Javanese queen regnant and the third Majapahit monarch, reigning from 1328 to 1350. She started her reign with suppressing the rebellions in the regions of Sadeng and Keta in central Java around 1331. She personally led the armies along with her cousin Aditya Warman in these battles. With the help of her Prime Minister Gajamada and her cousin Aditya Warman, she started the conquest of the Majapahit Empire. The Majapahit Empire developed a naval fleet which helped in dominating the seas of Southeast Asia. The Javanese learned of the gunpowder technology from the UN forces of Kublai Khan. Before the Mongol invasion, the weapons used were mostly bows and arrows, spears, and short blades. The Queen's forces under Gajamada ushered in the new era in weaponry. When she retired, the Majapahit Empire's territories almost matched the entire Indonesia of today. After her death, she was deified aptly as Hindu goddess Parvati. It is a norm to deify the royals as the Hindu gods and goddesses. Sri Suryatai Sri Suryatai was a royal queen consort during the 16th century Aitaya period of Siam, now Thailand. She is famous for having given up her life in the defense of her husband, King Mahat. Chakrapat in a battle during the Burmese Siamese War, which took place from 1547 to 1549. As the story goes, while perched on the neck of an elephant, King Chakrapat led his army into battle against Burmese troops. Accompanying him were his chief queen, Sri Suryotai, and one of their young daughters, Princess Borom Dilok, the two riding together on a smaller war elephant. Both royal ladies were dressed in male military attire. The Siamese army under Maha Chakrapat soon met the advanced column, commanded by the Visra of Prom, and the two armies engaged in battle. The commanders of the two forces engaged in single elephant combat, as was the custom of the time. Maha Chakrapat's elephant panicked and gave flight, charging away from the enemy, the Viceroy giving chase. Fearing for the life of her husband, Queen Sri Suryatai charged ahead to put her elephant between the queen and the viceroy, thereby blocking his pursuit. The viceroy then engaged the queen in single combat, fatally cleaving her from shoulder to heart with his spear, also mortally wounding her daughter. Both mother and child met their deaths on the back of the same elephant. It was said that the viceroy didn't know he was fighting a woman until his blow struck. As she fell dying, her helmet came off, exposing her long hair. This heroic deed helped end the battle and extend the life of the Ayutthaya a bit longer. Kimalahayati or Malahayati Malahayati is an Indonesian naval general and the first female admiral in modern history after Artemisia I. She led an all-women army known as the Inong Valley Armada, comprised of wives of soldiers who died and became one of the most feared and formidable fighting forces to roam the seas around Sumatra. Malahayati and her armada courageously sailed the eastern shores of Sumatra, the Malacca Straits and the western shores of Malaya to guard their kingdom and nation. She single-handedly drove the Dutch out of her country and was so renowned across the globe that even Queen Elizabeth I was afraid of her. Malahayati was killed in combat while attacking the Portuguese fleet at Tuluk Krum Raya. She was buried at Lering Bukit Kota Dalam, a small fishing village 34 kilometers from Banda Ase. 17th century, Sukikawa Istana. Suki Kawaiistana was an Indonesian all-women palace guard regiment under the leadership of Admiral Miura Ganti and Vice Admiral Kut Miura Insuyen between 1604 and 1607. It was these women who saved the future Sultan Iskandar Muda from imprisonment by his rival Ma Ying Taphan and the Krom Klone. Mayin Tapan, also called as the Great Mother of War, is the head of Komklone, the all-female bodyguard of the King of Siam. The Komklone were established in 1688 and were a well-disciplined force responsible for the security of the royal family and the maintenance of order within the palace grounds. The unit, also known as the Palace Amazons or the Amazon Regiment, was schooled in the use of the musket. Tapan's 400 troops who dressed in yellow uniforms were the best trained of all the king's soldiers and were never defeated in battle. 18th century, Prajurit Estri. 
Pujurit Estri, which means guards women, is another Indonesian elite unit, this time of the Mataram Sultanate consisting of women warriors. They were trained in warfare by Mangkunagara I and led by female warrior Radin Ayu Mataati. It is estimated that the unit consisted of 150 young and beautiful women who were skilled at war. They were experts in various weaponry such as shields, bows, poison-tipped arrows, spears, blowpipes, and rifles. They were also good at horseback riding. In general, their skills were higher than the male soldiers trained at that time. These troops are like special forces that can perform various secret tasks. The S3 warriors were not only trained to wield weapons and fight, they were also highly trained practitioners of court arts such as music and dance. Gabriela Silang Gabriela Silang was a military general in the resistance to Spanish colonialism in the Philippines and led the longest sustained revolt against the colonizers. She married Ilocano resistance leader Diego Silang. Gabriela was not only Silang's partner, she was his equal and closest advisor. Diego Silang was later assassinated by a traitor paid by the Catholic Church. Following his death, Gabriela took on full leadership of the resistance. Gabriela led the resistance group for over four months before being captured. She and around 100 resistance fighters were executed by the colonizers on September 20, 1763. Tautep Kasatri and Tausi Tsunton Tautep Kasatri and Tausi Tsunton were noble titles bestowed to Tan Fu Yinshan, wife of the then recently deceased governor of Phuket province, and her sister Queen Muk by King Rama I in honor of their heroic acts. The sisters defended the island in the Burmese-Siamese War during the late 18th century. According to popular belief, they repelled a five-week invasion by Burmese in 1785 by dressing up as male soldiers and rallying Siamese troops. They were also referred to as Chen and Muk. Bui Thi Suan Bui Thi Suan was a Vietnamese female general during the Thai San Rebellion. She is said to have learned martial arts as a child and was reputedly a strong woman. Legend has it that she once rescued Chen Kuan Yu, who later became her husband from a tiger. She and Chen Kuan Yu joined the Taishan Rebellion early and won many battles. She helped the Taishan army train elephants, which participated in many battles. She became known as one of the five principal women in the Taishan dynasty. When she and her husband were captured together by the Wing forces, both of them were executed. Her husband was either beheaded or skinned, while she was crushed to death by an elephant. The new emperor then had her lungs, liver, heart, and arms fed to his troops so that they might gain her courage. 19th century, Tao Sudanati. Tao Sudanati is the royally bestowed title of Lady Mo, also known as Yamo. She was the wife of the assistant governor during Rama III's reign and became a heroic figure during the war between the Kingdom of Siam and Laos. During 1826, she successfully organized a prisoner revolt after Chawa Nu of Wen Chan had conquered Koret during his rebellion against Siam. One version of the legend says she convinced the women to seduce the Lao soldiers. Another says she got them drunk, and then the Thai men launched a surprise attack saving the city. Kuet Nya Dien, aka Kut Nya Dien. Kut Nyak Dien led a band of guerrillas fighting against Dutch colonial forces in the mountains of Ase in Sumatra during the Ase War. She was the wife, chief strategist, and political mentor of the rebel leader Tuku Umar. Following the death of her husband Tuku Umar, she led guerrilla actions against the Dutch for 25 years. She was posthumously awarded the title of National Hero of Indonesia in 1964 by the Indonesian government. Gregorio Montoya y Patricio Gregorio Montoya y Patricio was a Filipino revolutionary who fought during the Philippine Revolution to avenge her husband, also a revolutionary who died during the revolution. Montoya led a 30-member unit of the Katipunan with the bolo on one hand and the Katipunan flag on the other at the Battle of Binacayan Dalahican. She was killed during the battle. Teresa Magbanwa Teresa Magbunwa, dubbed as the Visayan Joan of Arc, was a Filipino school teacher and military leader. When the 1896 Philippine Revolution against Spain broke out, she became one of only a few women to join the Panay based Visayan arm of the Katipunan, the initially secret revolutionary society headed by Andres Bonifacio. 
Despite opposition from her husband, Magbunwa followed her two younger brothers and took up arms against the Spaniards, leading troops into combat and winning several battles under the command of General Martin Delgado. She is credited as the only woman to lead troops in the Visayan area during the revolution. She is one of the few Filipinos to have participated in all three resistant movements against Spain in the Philippine Revolution, the United States in the Philippine-American War, and Japan in World War II. Trinidad Texon Popularly known as the mother of Biak Nabato, she was one of the few revolutionary women who actually fought side by side with the revolutionary men for the country's freedom from the Spanish colonizers. She fought in 12 bloody battles in Bulacan, including the famous Battle of Biak Nabato, and would often get wounded, but she would always return to the field after she recovered. During the Philippine-American War, she joined the revolutionary forces led by General Gregorio del Pilar. She also served in the Malolos Republic and was designated as the Commissary of War. Texan died on January 28, 1928 at the age of 80. Agueda Cahabagan Known in history as the Tagalog Joan of Arc and Generala Agueda, Agueda Cahabagan is the only officially listed woman general during the Philippine Revolution of 1896 to 1898 and the Philippine-American War of 1888 to 1902. She was reportedly often seen in the battlefield dressed in white, armed with a rifle and brandishing a bolo knife. 20th Century, Queen Timin Kai. Queen Timin Kai, co-founded the new Revolutionary Party of Vietnam, which is the predecessor of the Communist Party of Vietnam. In 1930, she went to Hong Kong and became a secretary for Ho Chi Minh. From 1931 to 1934, she was jailed by the British administration in Hong Kong. In 1936, she returned to Vietnam and became the top leader of the communists in Saigon. She was seized by the French colonial government in 1940 and was executed by firing squad the next year. Today, Wing Thi Minh Kai is honored as a revolutionary martyr by the Vietnamese Communist Party and some roads, schools, and administrative units in Vietnam are named after her. Vo Thi Sao Vo Thi Sao was a Vietnamese schoolgirl who fought as a guerrilla against the French occupiers of Vietnam. Vo Thi Sao has become a legend in Vietnamese history for her fierce dedication to the Viet Minh. After approximately two years as a contact for the guerrillas and resistance fighters, Vo Thi Sao launched her first attack upon French soldiers. At the age of 14, she threw a grenade in a busy market that killed one soldier and injured 12 others. She escaped unnoticed and planned a second attack. At 16, she again threw a grenade in an attempt to kill a Vietnamese man responsible for executing guerrilla fighters. The grenade did not explode and she was subsequently apprehended by French authorities. She was captured, tried, convicted, and executed by firing squad by the French colonialists in 1952, becoming the first woman to be executed at Consan prison. She was 19. She had refused to be blindfolded before her death, looking into their eyes and singing the national anthem of North Vietnam until the end. Commander Luaywai, aka Remedios Paraiso Gomez. She is the Filipino World War II heroine who gave fighting like a girl a whole new meaning. Before every battle, she would fearlessly wear her bright red lipstick into battle as she led her troops with boldness. Around this time, women were slowly integrated into the Philippine military units, and this was unsettling to many. Kubanda Luaywai was no stranger to sexism. She is known to challenge any of her comrades who slighted her for being female. Then she goes on to remind everyone, one of the things I am fighting for in this movement is the right to be myself. Maria Lorena Barros Lorena founded a militant women's organization in the 70s, shortly before martial law was declared in the Philippines. When martial law was declared, she went underground, was later captured, and was a top political prisoner. She escaped to the countryside as a guerrilla fighter and was killed during a military ambush at 28 years old. She is seen as a symbol of the women's movement with her strength and courage inspiring women. Countless poems, songs, and plays are written in her honor. Lilia Quindosa Santiago, in her book, In the Name of the Mother, writes, Barras is now a symbol of poet, warrior, lover, woman. Many young women writers derive inspiration from her writings, principles, and struggle. Her name is often mentioned in meanings of women members of the movement. Empowering, resilient, and feminine, these badass women have fought hard to pave the way for Southeast Asian women of today. Let's continue to honor the legacy they have left behind and influence the Southeast Asian women of the future.
That's it for today. If you liked today's video or learned anything new, press the like button, subscribe and ring the bell to get the latest content from The Daily Watch. See you next time.